Today, we celebrate the first Sunday of Christmas, during which we think about the significance of Christmas Day. And the significance is the incarnation. The incarnation refers to the fact that in Jesus the Christ, God chose to become human, to inhabit a body made of flesh and blood. As Richard Rohr points out, Christ is not Jesus' last name. <laughs> the Christ is part of the Trinity, part of God, and we don't need to forget that. The Gospel of John makes this very clear in its opening verses that I just read. John doesn't talk about the birth of Jesus like Matthew or Luke do. He begins at the very beginning, making it explicit that the word Christ was with God in the beginning. All things came into being through Christ, this word. Christ incarnate in Jesus is the light of the world who gives life. So Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ child who was born in a stable in Bethlehem, was fully human and fully divine. In Jesus the Christ, God decided to be born into a human body and willingly be subject to all the human frailties and limitations that we face in order to show us how very much God loves us. It's astounding to think that the all-powerful God, the creator of all that is, would deign to become human. But that's exactly what Christ did. This shows us that God prioritizes relationships and wanted to make it easier for us to have a relationship with the divine. So God became human to become more accessible to us. Now there are a few things we can learn from the Incarnation. God inhabiting a human body shows us that God loves every part of us. Our bodies for centuries have gotten a bad rap. There's been a dichotomy that splits the spirit from the flesh. The idea that the spirit or the soul is good and the flesh or the body is bad has been a part of Western Christian theology for centuries. It all started with Augustine and his concept of original sin that he developed way back in the 5th century and continues to this day. But when we really look at the life of Jesus the Christ, we see that God doesn't think our bodies are bad. Christ chose to live in one. With the incarnation, God bridged the, the divide between humanity and divinity and showed that the two could ex coexist in one flesh. God also showed us that our bodies are important and that they aren't just vessels uh, for our souls. They are God-given and miraculous. They allow us to both enact and embody our faith. Jesus showed us this. While he did talk theology and religious doctrine with the people, especially the religious leaders, Jesus spent far more time actually embodying his beliefs. He prayed often. He sought out those who needed a divine encounter. And when he saw a need, he just didn't talk about what God thought about it. He did something about it. And more, most importantly, he lived a life of love and acceptance of other, a life focused on inclusion and not exclusion. So the incarnation shows us that our bodies are good and they enable us to put our faith into action. In addition, the incarnation shows us the depth of God's incredible love for us. By being born a tiny, helpless baby, God became vulnerable. Even though Jesus was the Christ through whom all things were created, Mary and Joseph had to provide for him. He needed his mother to feed him and change his diapers. 
just like all of us did. Like all children, he had to learn to walk and talk. And he would fall down and scrape his knees, and when he did, he bled. When he went through puberty, his voice changed. All of this happened just like it does for children every day and everywhere. He, like all of us, needed his parents, his extended family, and his friends to nurture him and give him support, protection, and love. Now, we don't know much about Jesus' first 30 years. There's a big hole in the Gospels about that, what went on during this time. But I personally think it's nice that Jesus could grow up and mature, could play with his siblings, could learn a trade from Joseph, and could do all the things that children and young adults do without people outside his community paying much attention. I think it's revealing that Christ chose to live a fully human life and a develop according to a human timeline, even waiting to begin his ministry until the age of 30, like other prophets of his day. Those years in relative obscurity enabled Christ to just enjoy being human and to experience everything that we do. The incarnate God also allows us to get to know God on a whole different level. Jesus the Christ personalized God for us. With Jesus, God took on flesh and blood so that we could actually see how God acts, who God spends time with, and what God cares about. Through Jesus' life, we find that God doesn't care about money, power, or status like our society does. God chose to be born to an impoverished Middle Eastern Jewish couple who couldn't even find a place to stay when they went to Bethlehem for the census and had to bed down in a stable, which is where Jesus was born. But in Jesus' lowly birth, God shows us that everyone is important, no matter where they're born, how much money they have, or what their nationality is. God, through Jesus' words and actions, showed us that all people are important, especially the ones that others look down on. Jesus spent time with people with leprosy and all types of infirmities. He valued women and welcomed children. He didn't shun outcasts. He invited them into his company and even his inner circle. Now, God had been saying all these things through the prophets and through the Hebrew scriptures for hundreds of years, but the people didn't seem to have gotten the message, just like we still overlook that message today. Thus, Jesus came and embodied that message so that there could be no confusion as to what God thinks is important. Finally, via the Incarnation, God showed us that emotions are important. Jesus experienced the full array of human emotions during his life. For example, he cried when he found out that his friend Lazarus had died, even though he knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. So he showed that emotions are important. And because Jesus showed emotions... God demonstrates for us that emotions are a God-given way for us to express what we are feeling, and we shouldn't try to hide those or negate them. In Jesus the Christ, God came and lived and died among us. As our gospel passage this morning said, God's word gives the world life and light. Because Jesus was God in the flesh, we learned that our bodies carry God's light and life. Pastor Judith Jones puts it this way, Jesus' body is God's temple, where the word of God pitches its tent among us. In Jesus' words and actions, God's glory shines. 
Jesus' face and touch communicate God's grace and love. He not only teaches, but embodies God's truth. The Word became flesh to help us see every human life as a temple of the Holy One. So since each of us is a temple of the Holy One, God lives in us, and God's light and life shine through us. So as you continue to celebrate Christmas, think about what the incarnation really means. It demonstrated in a unique way how very much God loves humankind and all of creation. And knowing that we are loved by God should change the way we live. Being a beloved child of God shows that we are all worthy. Worthy of love, worthy of respect, worthy of a place at God's table. And as we live into this awesome love that God has for us, we can not only love ourselves, but we can embody God's love for others. We can emulate the way Jesus the Christ lived and loved. This means that we will be willing to be vulnerable in our love for others, to include those that society excludes, and to see everyone we meet as worthy of our love. In these ways, we will all be bearers of God's life and light, and we will embody God's love for all those we meet. Thanks be to God.